Hey, Indian Creek 8th grade students, it's Professor Blazik back with a video in response to our last assessment on the Civil War quest, the writing response that I know a lot of you will be looking to reattempt uh, because the original score that you received you weren't happy with. I decided to make a video to hopefully give you some more ideas on how you can improve your response, just some tips, pointers, on what information to make sure you include, and hopefully give you an idea of what you need to get the score that you want, which for most of you is a 3 or a 4. So let's jump right in. So the first step that I wanted to go through with you is just looking at the rubric on which you were graded, because if you understand the rubric, if you understand what we're looking for in this assignment, it will make it a lot easier for you to meet all of the requirements. So you will probably remember there were two learning objectives that we scored you on for the quest for chapter 16. The first was to explain multiple causes and effects of historical events. The second was to organize applicable evidence into a coherent argument about the past. So to put these objectives into simpler terms, the first one, the LC, to meet or exceed this objective, you needed to give multiple reasons for your response to the questions and also multiple effects for the events that those questions were talking about. You couldn't just give, for example, when talking about McClellan, you couldn't just give one example of his poor leadership. You couldn't just give one effect that the Emancipation Proclamation had. You needed to go in depth and explain multiple causes and effects of these events. And the second one is basically a fancy way of saying that you needed to find evidence that related to the questions and then use it correctly to make a strong and easy to understand argument about the past. That's what coherent means. Coherent means that your thinking was good, your ideas were good, they were presented in the right way, in a way that's easy to follow and understand. So we've got our learning objectives at the top and then your ability to meet these objectives were scored in two questions, and hopefully you remember these. The first dealt with Lincoln and his reasoning for waiting until after Antietam to give the Emancipation Proclamation, and if you think this was the right move, or if you think he should have taken some different action. The other question was how General McClellan's leadership affected the early battles of the war, and if Lincoln was right to have fired McClellan. So we're going to look at both the objectives and the questions and look at what information you needed to include for each question to meet each of the objectives. So this is just a reminder of the rubric, the four areas on which you were scored. We had emerging, approaching, meeting, and exceeding. And you can see that with each step up from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4, there is more deep thinking, there is more accurate thinking, and then once you want to improve from a 3 to a 4, you needed to take your understanding and apply it in a way that was not just simply taught in class. Because remember, when you're going through these writing assignments, when you're trying to meet these standards, a 3 meets the standards. That is when you have showed that you have mastered what was taught, you understood all the important information, and you can explain it well. So to go to a four, where you're actually above and beyond what the standard calls for, you needed to include knowledge and apply that knowledge that was above and beyond what was taught. So that hopefully, for those of you who are looking to get that four, that difference will help you understand exactly what gets you that score. So let's look at the first question, question 38, and how you can work up 
to a 3 or a 4. And so in this slide, we're going to be looking at the first standard, which is to explain multiple causes and effects of historical events. So keep in mind that to meet this standard, you need to explain multiple causes and effects of Lincoln waiting until after Antietam and multiple causes and effects of him giving the Emancipation Proclamation and whether you think these effects would have been different if he had maybe chosen a different route. So what I've done is you have your score in this column here. This again is just the description that we went over. This was in your rubric. And then here in the characteristics, this is what you need to include in your response to earn that three or four. So if we look over here, we'll look at three first to show what is required to show that you were meeting that standard of explaining multiple causes and effects of the Emancipation Proclamation. So in the characteristics box, I've written that if you provided multiple accurate reasons with support for why Lincoln gave the Emancipation Proclamation and why he waited until after Antietam, you are in the three category. You're meeting the standard. You also need to use support to argue if Lincoln made the right choice by giving multiple positives or negatives of his decision. Now, I included the word accurate because some of the responses that I read included information like Lincoln giving the Emancipation Proclamation led to the Underground Railroad. And that's not true. The Underground Railroad had been around before Lincoln gave the Emancipation Proclamation. Um, so just make sure that the information you're including is always accurate. Otherwise, again, you're not meeting that standard. Now, if we look at the four, the exceeding response, it's very similar to the three, but once you get down to about here, you see that it says, you also applied your knowledge of the situation to pose other reasons for Lincoln's choice or other potential effects upon the country if he had chosen not to issue the proclamation or had waited until a different time. These ideas, as well as the positive negatives of the proclamation, are supported with information from outside sources. So the big difference here between the three and the four response is that in the four, the exceeding, you took the information that was taught, and then you took it a step further and thought about what could have happened if Lincoln had gone a different route. And so... By doing that, you're moving beyond simply what was taught in class. You're showing that higher level thinking, and that is really the key to moving from meeting the expectations to exceeding the expectations. So here, we're going to look at the same question, 38, again, talking about the Emancipation Proclamation. But now we're going to look at the other standard, which is organizing your evidence into a coherent or an easy to understand argument about the past. So. For meeting, you can see that it says use multiple relevant pieces of evidence to support your argument. Your argument for or against Lincoln's choice was clear and well explained, easy to follow, and contains sufficient explanation of all areas of your ideas. So in other words, to get that three, that meeting expectations, you need to make sure that you explain all of your ideas, you explain your argument fully. Okay, and I talked to some of the students in my social studies class about how sometimes in writing you have to pretend that your reader knows nothing about the situation and just be very clear on everything that happens, everything that you're talking about in your answer, so that we know at, when we're grading your responses that you understand what was going on. And so when you're using evidence, you need to make sure that you integrate it and you don't just sort of drop the evidence in and then don't talk about it very much. Because that was something that I saw a lot this first time around when really you're using that evidence to then make your argument and support your argument. Now, 
if you're looking into the four category, <clears throat> the big difference between meeting the expectations and exceeding the expectations for this part of the question is that you included potential drawbacks or advantages to Lincoln's decision and applied your knowledge in a skillful way that provided an exceedingly deep understanding of potential consequences of Lincoln's choices in giving the Emancipation Proclamation. So again, this is where you took your thinking from just showing that you understood and can apply what was taught, and you took it to the next level of giving positives and negatives to Lincoln's decision. And that, again, is really the difference between meeting and exceeding the standards. So now let's go through question 39 in the same way. Let's talk about what you need to include to get that three or four. So now we're looking at McClellan, and we're back to the first standard, which is explaining multiple causes and effects of historical events. So to get a three on this part of the question, you needed to provide multiple accurate examples with support of how McClellan's leadership style affected early battles. Your explanation included specific information about individual battles, such as date, location, results, etc., and connected directly to Lincoln's firing of McClellan. What a lot of the responses that I saw from my class focused on was just that they kept repeating the fact that McClellan was cowardly, and they gave some examples of how his leadership showed that he was a coward, but there was very little specific information about the battles. And we want to know when, for example, he waited four days before acting, and when it was that he had his troops find the Confederacy's plans, and yet he still did nothing. So that's good evidence to have, but you need to make sure that you explain when this happened and then how McClellan's unwillingness to act affected the battles. That really shows that you have mastered what was taught, that you understood in, uh, McClellan's impact on the early battles. Now, for a four, the big difference, again, is just taking that next step. So the, the part of four that is different from three starts right here where it says, you also applied your knowledge of the situation to propose other potential consequences of McClellan's leadership style or potential effects upon the war if Lincoln or McClellan had acted differently. So in other words, if McClellan hadn't been such a coward, how could the war have been different? Or if Lincoln had fired him earlier or later, how could the war have been different? And so by not just focusing on simply what was taught, but taking that next step, you would be moving into that four territory. And so now let's go through the second standard for question 39, which is organizing your evidence into a coherent argument. So for that three, you would need to use multiple relevant pieces of evidence to support your explanation and also your argument on why Lincoln should or should not have fired McClellan was clear, well explained, and had enough support. So again, using that support to show what you understood and that you have mastered what was taught. And then the big difference to getting the four is right here that you also included potential alternate plans of action for McClellan or Lincoln and show that deep understanding in explaining how these other plans could have impacted the war overall. Again, just taking that next step in thinking. And now just some final suggestions for when you're looking to resubmit your response. Most importantly, don't get frustrated. This was a challenging assignment. It was your first writing assignment. It's great that you're looking to improve, but it's going to take time and effort, but it will really pay off in the long run. So just don't be too down on yourself after your first score. Always look to make sure to cover all areas of the questions and standards, and be clear on all the points that you're making. Include important information like dates, battle names. Make it so that we know that you know all of the important information. And lastly, any questions you have, come talk to us. We are here to help. We want to help. But we need you to take that step in order for that to happen. Okay? So I hope this video is very helpful in getting you started on rewriting your response. This has been Professor Blazik. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. And I wish you all the best of luck in submitting your 
responses.